In this video, I'll be taking apart the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. If you need any tools, there will be links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back with either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens covers are held down with some adhesive, so if you need to replace those, you can just apply some heat and pry them off. So you won't have to take apart the phone to replace those. At this point, there are 17 Phillips screws that have to be removed. Here's a look at the wireless charging coil and the NFC antenna, as well as the ultra wide band antenna. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Here's the top earpiece speaker assembly. The speaker is located over here, and there's an antenna board on the corner. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket. If you want to replace that, you'd have to use a razor blade or an X Acto knife to carefully cut out the glue around the corners and pry the camera out. This is the bottom speaker assembly. And the vibrator motor or haptic feedback motor is located behind the speaker and the housing. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. This flex cable connects the main board to the screen. This one is for charging the S Pen. And this is for the 5G millimeter wave antenna on the top corner. And the 5G millimeter wave antenna that's located on this side connects with this flex cable to the main board. Taking a look at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 200 megapixel main, a 50 megapixel telephoto with 5x optical zoom, and a 10 megapixel telephoto with 3x optical zoom. The main camera as well as both telephoto have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top, 
the laser autofocus, and the LED flash. This main board is also a multi-layer board design. Taking a look at the back, we can see the proximity sensor, as well as the connectors for the cameras, which can be disconnected by popping them off. Here's another look at the camera assembly. Once that's removed, we can see another microphone located over here. And there's a heat transfer film and compound over the processor. Once that's peeled back, we can see a thermal pad underneath. Once the thermal pad has been removed, we can see the RAM which is seated on top of the processor. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the millimeter wave antenna to the side of the frame. These two are the 5G millimeter wave antennas. Not every version of the Galaxy S24 Ultra will have these antennas, but that doesn't mean your phone doesn't have 5G. All of the versions have the standard sub 6 GHz 5G antenna. To remove the battery, there is a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we can see the vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. And the vapor chamber helps to transfer heat. There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see the primary microphone which is located over here. And next to that is a charger port with a red rubber gasket around it. Looking at the other side, we can see a gray rubber gasket over the charger port as well, as well as the SIM reader located over here. And here's the S Pen. So to pry the screen off, heat needs to be applied to the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. Now since the screen has a crack on the top corner from the drop test, prying the screen off will pose a higher chance of damaging it since it already has a crack in the glass. The way the screen is glued down to the frame is almost impossible to save a working screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it off and not worry about damaging it since it's almost impossible not to.
So looking at the back of the screen, we can see the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner located here, which is basically embedded or soldered to the back of the screen. There's also the cutout over here on top for the proximity sensor, as well as the front facing camera. Looking at this side of the midframe, we can see this area of graphite film, and the graphite film helps to transfer heat. So looking at the size and design of the vapor chamber, it has increased and changed since the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Moving on, to replace the volume keys and power button, the flex cable is located over here. This metal bracket would have to be pulled out of the frame, and the flex cable would have to be peeled off from the frame. Here's a look at the flex cable for the volume keys and power button. Now as far as the physical buttons themselves, they have to be pulled out of the frame. And finally, before I forget, for anyone who's worried about accidentally puncturing the microphone or the filters for the microphones by inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the hole so they won't get damaged. Also, there is a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the bottom opening for the speaker. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.